This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Speaking of square things, do you know what this thing here is? You might think, okay, this default cube, right? It's actually the shockwave, you know. It doesn't have too many nodes, like just this amount here. And then you can also uh, change the value here and the shockwave appears like that and disappears also. And it's actually very easy to make. So let's create a new scene. And there is our default cube, right? We are not gonna delete this. We are gonna keep it and add a shader editor. Now, this is a cube, but this shockwave has a shape of a sphere. So how do we make a sphere, you know? So we need texture coordinates, right? Texture coordinates. And this give us um, a gradient of X, Y, and Z. We can use those to calculate a sphere out of this cube. So to do this, we need actually this formula to calculate length of vectors. But Blender has this pretty, pretty well like integrated here. So you don't need too much. We just are going to uh, go here and click on length. And now this should be something like that, uh, except we don't see a sphere. So we take a color ramp and we put it here and we increase the contrast to like the maximum here. And then we still don't see anything. Well, this is unfortunate, but we just have to scale in the edit mode. There is a sphere inside here, but we should somehow get it out. To do that, we need a volume shader because this is a volumetric effect. So add a volume shader. This is um, a rather easy principle volume and plug this into the volume preview this. Now we don't see anything here except some faint things. And while this shader does work in EV, I prefer building this in cycles just because it's uh, believe it or not, faster. We just need to connect our beloved sphere into the density just for a moment. And you don't see too much because density is not a good option for this case. Let's connect this to the emission instead. And emission strength, sorry. And now this looks like that. And this is, this is fine. I mean, this is a sphere, but we need to invert this and make this really sharp. So let's delete this color ramp and let's instead add a math node and we need a less than function here. So this means anything that has the distance less than 0 0.5, which by the way, if you measure is exactly 0 0.5 right now, as you see 0 0.5 meters, uh, anything less than that is going to be white or have the value of one and anything larger than this is going to have the value of zero, so nothing and uh, decrease the density so that we don't have this halo around this mesh and this is how it works you know the shockwave actually it should be like a ball with like a shell you know it should have some thickness to its walls and be empty inside now we can do some complicated stuff subtracting different uh, less than and stuff we don't need this we actually just need a um, compare for example a value of one we can compare this with a distance of 0 0.25 to both sides. Right now, as you see, we compare exactly this value here, uh, which is uh, one meter from the center. And we go by 0 0.25 to one side and 0 0.25 to the other side. And we just need a very small number here, like 0 0.01. And now we have a sphere that is uh, emitting light and is pretty much like a very basic version of a shockwave. To make this a bit better, you know, we need a noise texture because this has to have some surface imperfections like my original intro one has. Take a noise texture, right? We put it into this object, we take the object coordinates, this looks like that. And we also have the color output. And because, you know, vectors are colors, we can mix the original vectors and the uh, noise texture here. We can mix those together and create something uh, quite random, so the length uh, node here is like, okay, you give me incorrect values, I'm gonna give you incorrect answers, and this is exactly what we want. Connect the noise here into the second socket, things look like that, and select a linear light. Now this is very, very, very random, and uh, not very wanted, so let's put like 0 0.25 here, and let's decrease the scale to two, uh, detail to three, roughness don't change, and the last one to 0 0.4. At least these are the values that I found look pretty nice. You don't have to use those. We can scale this and you see it evolves with uh, with time. So it's not always like the same shape it has. And now what we need to do next with this stuff here is that we need to remove the bottom part of it. We have to multiply a part of it with zero. So how and which part? Well, if you see this number here, if you multiply with zero, right, everything disappears, right? And if I multiply with one, we have everything. So as you understand, we need to have basically zero down here and one up here. And what gives us this kind of a range? This is a separate XYZ. 
and we take the object coordinates and we separate those and this is exactly what we're looking for. So now we are going to multiply uh, this result with that, except this is not looking very nice because it is very, very smooth and I'd like this to be sharp. This has to be like cut off completely here. So now we can, what we can do is that we can take a crater than node. Now this looks extremely amateur and so not very professional at all. So what we need is to make the uh, part uh, down here a lot more bright than the part up here because it's like you know fire that is brighter down there and not so bright up there. My idea is that we can add something to this area here so that it gets brighter you know. So what can we add? We have uh, or we need a gradient uh, which has the value of zero up here and one down here. It's dark up here and it's bright down here. So our z uh, gradient right now has the values uh, which are not very acceptable. So this means it has one up here and here it's as zero and here it is minus one. Now there are many ways mathematically to get to this from this to that. Uh, I'm just going to use a map range which is kind of like an easier way and map this range. Our original minimum is minus one. Let's put this here minus one. Our maximum was one. Our new minimum is one. So let's put this here and our new maximum is zero. So let's put this here. And now we have a range like that. And let's add this range to our shockwave. And this creates problems. Well, this creates problems because it's adding it everywhere, not just where the shockwave is, you know. Our shockwave comes from here, right? This from this multiply. So let's call this shockwave mask, max, no. Max means liver in Estonian, by the way. Here it is, uh, the mask, and now if we add something to it, it adds everywhere. But we need to multiply the thing that is being added to it with the mask. So it's only adding it where we want, right? This is how the nodes look if you're wondering what is happening here. This doesn't give any effect, right? But we can add another multiplication afterwards and make it stronger. So it is stronger as a whole, right? Nothing is working. But we need a color ramp to increase the contrast of this thing a little bit because this is working, I promise you. And you see, it is working, right? If you go to the side, you see it is working, but it is very very straight of a line here, right? This is super straight. Instead, we want this to be a little bit more noisy. Problem why it is straight is that it comes from the original object coordinates, which look like that. Uh, but we also have a noisy ones with a linear light here that look a little bit more noisy. Let's use for the last map range here, just another separate XYZ. And we use the linear light here. So I'm gonna drag this thing. Here, so we have like a noisy version of those coordinates and an ordinary one, and I'm gonna connect the noisy ones Z to the map range. Now, this looks uh, a lot more noisy than it was before. So you see, this was before, this is after, and it is following the surface, so this is very good. And this is how the nodes look in case you feel there was some kind of a mystic things going on. The next thing that we need, that when fire emerges from a surface, it is actually more smooth down here, and has more uh, distortion or in this case up here. So we can control this with this linear light thing. If this is like way too much, if this is way too little, I'm actually gonna add like a plane here. I'm gonna make our world dark and I'm also gonna delete the one light that we have in the scene. And now if I increase the linear light to see, uh, we should have zero down here and like, let's say one up there. So to have a gradient like that, we also need a separate X, Y, Z. Uh, let's use the Z and plug this to the linear light. And now let's see how this whole thing looks. And this looks pretty logical like a fire, but this is, this is way too clean. So instead, let's use a color ramp to control where this exactly happens and how. Now, I don't want this bottom part, uh, this black here. I don't want this to be like complete black because this is like way too much. So I'm just gonna put like 0 0.1 here and now this is uh, not a clean circle anymore but also not very crazy. Let's also switch this uh, to ease so that it's a little more um, smooth and uh, let's switch also this one to maybe ease. Now this is working very nicely and also if you now uh, move the compare value here 
as you see, it is emerging from the void and I mean, it's not disappearing yet, but it's looking pretty nice. Now we should add the colors, but first... We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This intro was the most expensive intro I have ever done. It had some, a lot of CGI, a lot of compositing, some traveling back and forth, equipment rentals, all that stuff. And this wouldn't have been possible if there wasn't Squarespace sponsoring this video. What is Squarespace? Well, you're asking. Squarespace is an online presence tool. So you can build websites or stores. So when you launch Squarespace for the first time, you see like a lot of templates there, but not just any templates, beautiful ones. You can filter them based on your needs. For example, if you are starting your freelance career, you can select online store professional services, or if you're selling art, you can select online store art and design or if you're selling instant noodles you can select instant noodles okay actually they have food there but you can sell instant noodles as well now once your template is chosen you can start building your website it is actually very easy you don't have to code you can drag and drop and type and images align automatically it's a smooth experience you know they also make it very convenient to add payment processing and checkouts if you're selling art or some services this works like charm now if this got your mouth watering for some websites for some stores instant noodles Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when your website is ready, go to squarespace.com slash badnormals to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. Now let's continue with the colors. Well, they are easy. We have a noise texture here, as you remember. This brand integration wasn't as long, you should remember. We have a factor and a color. You might be tempted to use the color, but we are using factor or instead. So let's um, take the factor and plug this into. Um, I cannot see this on my screen, but it should be emission color, right? Now everything is the same as before, except maybe a little bit worse because some of these colors are black. But let's add a color ramp and now you can drag those and we can select different colors here. So let's make sure the first one is, for example, um, blue and the second one should be you know, something like red. It's like a flame of alcohol, not that I have burned um, large amounts of those, but it's actually really uh, a lot like alcohol. Yeah, this is looking nice, I think. No, but this is very boring. Well, the reason is that all of those, uh, all of this blue area has exactly the same brightness. So this is not what you want, definitely. You would like to have a, um, a like a brighter parts in some areas. So to do this, shift right click drag over here this is the noise factor that we have and let's add another color ramp color ramp and plug this here now i would like the blue parts here to have some brighter areas so i'm going to isolate the blue parts which are if i remember correctly i'm going to check if these are the blue parts uh the white areas are actually okay i have to invert those okay now here is a blue part yeah, this is a blue part, right? And now I'm gonna add this to the brightness again, like um, like we have done before. So I'm gonna add an addition node, right? And this adds everywhere again. We don't want this. We want it to add only in the places where there is the shockwave and add this color ramps values. So I'm gonna drag the color ramp here and now you see, I mean, it is adding, but we also need to multiply this with our shockwave mask. So the shockwave mask is here and now this looks like that we don't see any difference at all so we need to multiply this to make it stronger uh sorry uh like that this is like maybe a little bit too heavy so i'm gonna switch this to like maybe put 50 here and also let's add some more contrast yes something like that and you know tweak those values until you feel you have found something that clicks in your head, you know, you're thinking this is a nice shockwave. But it is missing the one last crucial step. As you see, my shockwave in the intro is rotating. But it's not just rotating like R and Z and doing like that. It's rotating like more from the borders. So um, we should do something like that. And for that, we need to uh, add a mapping node. We add a mapping node and this uh, allows us to rotate on the Z axis. But we should be able to control this so that it's not rotating in the center, but only on the sides. Now, this implies that we somehow add a an input to the Z axis, right? So this tells me already that we need a combine XYZ or RGB, doesn't matter. They both work. Let's switch things up. Let's use RGB. And um, yeah, now we just need to input something here that is rotating this right this should be a gradient from the center 
to create a gradient to create a gradient from the center we need to calculate the length on the as you see already very conveniently on the screen on the y and x axis and leave the z intact so for that we take the object we put it here we, we calculate the length and before that what we do is that we take a vector math node and we multiply this um, with zero on the z-axis. So now this removes the z-axis and this basically means that we we now have like an infinite uh, cylinder or like infinite gradient going up like that. And we now take this length and put this into the blue value here which means rotation. Could be a, we'll combine xyz and z input or blue input, doesn't matter. Uh, it works uh, in every case. Let's look from the top and you see something is happening there. But is it what you want? Let's see. It's always a good idea to multiply something with a value so that we can see what is happening. Right, this is rotating as you see and it is looking pretty cool. So let's keep this like that and you see it is starting to rotate and grow and do all this stuff. And it should also disappear. So you should know how to do this already. The answer is rather simple. We just need a math node in the end and we need a multiplication. You can keyframe this manually if you want like to make it disappear or not. Uh, or you can just use um, the same, you know, the length here before the compare. This gives us basically a gradient. So we need to multiply this with this length. And so let's, let's now see what happens. I'm gonna take this control value here and you see they don't disappear. Well, it disappears in the center. Then that's the reason is because in the center, the vectors have a very small length. So we need to somehow turn this over. Map range from zero and one. Why am I using those values? Well, that's because this is exactly one meter of a length, this cube here. So I'm gonna map from zero to one to one and zero, disable the overlays. And let's see what happens now. Now if this, it disappears, right? And you can also add, if you want to, you know, get some finer control, you can add a color ramp and, and, and do something like that. And now this should, yeah, now this, now this is working very nicely. And this is how you make a shockwave. It looks really good, right? If you want to get access to this file and also files from the intro, then Patreon is your choice, is your way to go. Also, there are live streams uh, each month where we build a project together and all this beautiful stuff. So see you there and also see you next time.